Hello, this is The Streaming Service with me, Justin Hill, with another episode for those of us who really just want to watch good TV and movies. I'll give you the rundown on everything worth watching that has landed on streaming services this week, plus catch you up on all the -the behind-the-scenes news you may have missed. This week, Zac Efron flexes his humanitarian muscle, why everyone is obsessed with Yellowstone, and is Lindsay Lohan's new movie a sleigh crash? Why is the world obsessed with Yellowstone? Well, here are a few reasons why. It's a Western drama in its fifth season, always a good sign, and it's a show centred around the story of Montana rancher John Dutton, played by Kevin Costner, and there's more cowboy hats than you can poke a stick at. Mostly Dutton is waging a war on someone when it comes to his ranch, the Yellowstone Dutton Ranch, and in season five we pick things up as he, surprise, surprise, decided to run for governor last season, and so we get to see how that's all going for him. Also, Aussie actress Jackie Weaver, who made her debut in season four, is back and she's cussing and smashing glasses, y'all. I, John Dutton, do solemnly swear to uphold the constitution of the state of Montana against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Ruin them, starting with her. Signing this order is a declaration of war. We're already at war. I do this for my father. I don't do this for me. This fucking family! I love it when she gets mad. It means I'm gonna make a lot of money. Ah, don't you love it? Make sure you check out season five of Yellowstone on stand now with new episodes every Monday. This one gets eight cowboys out of ten. Like an early Christmas present we weren't meant to get yet, or maybe we weren't meant to get it at all. Lindsay Lohan has dropped her Christmas movie, Falling for Christmas, on Netflix. And yes, it might be a bit of a sleigh crash of a movie, but that's why it's amazing. Lilo plays the role of a rich heiress, Sierra, who loses her memory on a ski trip and ultimately falls in love with her saviour, played by Glee Eye Candy called Overstreet, whilst trying to remember who she is and why she can't put a sheet on her bed, or why people are trying to make fetch happen. Oh, wait. Wrong movie. That was Mean Girls. Is it a dead body? Sheriff, could you please tell her to let me out of here? First, we need to figure out who you are. What do you mean, who I am? My name is... My name is... So what are we supposed to do with her? I have a place. Does it have room service? Alrighty, went through the lost and found. Uh, are these used? Probably. But, you know, sometimes guests leave things here by accident, so. Not sure this was left here by accident. <laughs> the doctor did say that if I did normal things, my memory might come back. Doctor's orders. Huh? Have you ever actually made a bad year? <laughs> I don't think so. Like a Christmas stocking, Falling for Christmas is so full of Easter eggs and I have found a few for you. The bougie ski lodge owned by Sierra's dad has a horse called Balthazar, which is also the name of one of the three wise men. Did you know that? When Sierra flicks the TV on, what comes up on the screen? Netflix does, of course. And already queued up and ready to go are the Christmas movies A Castle for Christmas and A Christmas Prince. Finally, at one point in the film, Lindsay belts out a rendition of the song Jim Jingle Bell Rock, and that, my friends, is a nod to Mean Girls. You might remember her and the other Plastics do that little performance on stage in the Santa outfits. Fun fact, Jingle Bell Rock is also the song that Court Overstreet sang during his time on Glee. Easter eggs, singing, I mean, who does she think she is? Taylor Swift? Actually, Lindsay did have a very successful solo pop career. I'm tired of rumours starting. Oh, a classic. Falling for Christmas is on Netflix now. I'm giving this one seven Christmas trees out of ten. Speaking of things I'd like for Christmas, I've got another series you might like to check out and it's got a six pack to go along with it. No, not the beverage kind. I'm talking about the Zac Efron kind. The second series of Zac's Netflix show Down to Earth with Zac Efron Down Under sees our buff bestie travel around our beautiful country flexing his muscles, showing off that sparkly smile and incredible jawline. Oh, and he also learns about the amazing Aussies working on climate change, our stunning wildlife and those who take care of them, and he nibbles on some delicious local delicacies. (gasps) Not me, silly. (laughs) I'll let him explain. Let's go. We're back. Get ready for all new adventures. We will only have a couple of chances for this. 
this time, we're taking a deep dive into the sixth largest country in the world, Australia, with a unique variety of biomes, climates, and organisms. We're covering as much territory as we can, from mountaintops I like your office. to barrier reefs, all while trying some of the best local foods oh my gosh. as close to their sources as we can get. Here's the good water. We'll be visiting some of the top innovators. And it will collect and aggregate, disaggregate, and redistribute to all the parts of the biosphere. All seeking to find cleaner, better, and more sustainable ways of living. And using the lessons learned on this continent to serve as the microcosm for the entire planet. That's amazing. From biceps to biospheres and great hair to even better climate control, you can check out Zach, his six-pack, and Down to Earth on Netflix now. This one gets eight bicep flexes out of ten. Somebody stop me! Now, if you get that reference, then you got to know what this week's classic movie is, The Mask, starring Jim Carrey. Now, believe it or not, this film came out 28 years ago this year and is based on the story of Stanley Ipkiss, who finds a mystical mask that transforms him into a green-faced creature that has bucket loads of pizzazz and a thing for yellow suits. Fun fact, this movie was actually Cameron Diaz's first role on the big screen, but she had to audition 12 times to get it. The film also has a sequel that came out in 2005 called Son of the Mask, but doesn't star Jim Carrey. Apparently, he said no to returning to the role, even though he was offered a rumoured $10 million to do so. You can check out The Mask on Apple TV Plus or Amazon Prime Video now. Schmookin! Oh, God, stop. In announcements recently, not only is Neighbours coming back in 2023 to both Channel 10 and then onto Amazon Prime Video a week later, if you missed that, our other favourite show, The White Lotus, has been greenlit for a third season. And also, if you've got an ex who still mooches off you and reminds you of their existence by using your Netflix account, get ready to give them the boot once and for all with a new feature coming from the streaming platform. So they have announced that they're going to have your back as you swiftly get them out of your life with the ability to directly cut off particular devices from your Netflix account. So for each person logged in, you'll see them as a device. So say iPhone, smart TV, etc. Plus you'll be able to see the profile that was most recently used on that device, just so you don't accidentally kick Nana off your account. Now, the reason they've started doing this is because they're going to start charging you more if you have a stack of people logged onto your account. So cut those final ties kick them to the curb and move on with your life while they get the message that you are finally hashtag over. Also, if you want a very quick rundown of everything that's worth watching for the month of November on each platform, follow me on TikTok at just underscore hill now. That's all for this week from me. I will, of course, be back next week with all the latest movies and TV goss and make sure you download the streaming service on the Listener app to be the first to hear it and I'll see you next time. Listener.